domestic agenda. I understand what you're saying about asking Senator Cinema and Manchin, but a lot of Democrats on the Hill want the president to press for that top line. I think that's crucial to the Thursday vote. Was that his intent today? Because that seemed to be the view on the Hill of what he was trying to do with these meetings today. Uh, well, I, I can assure you that uh, when he has conversations, uh, they're quite candid, uh, they're direct, um, and he's had a long uh, relationship, a good relationship with Senator Sinema, as he has had with Senator Manchin, who he has been meeting with. I'm not sure if the meeting has ended yet, uh, but I'm going to keep those private. And um, we're obviously at a very sensitive time right now uh, in these discussions, a pivotal time uh, in these discussions. Um, and I understand the interest, but I'm going to try not to say anything that gets me fired today. I enjoy speaking with you all so much every day. <laughs> now, on a completely different matter, yesterday under oath, General McKenzie and General Milley both confirmed they also agreed with the commander on the ground. They agreed we should keep 2,500 troops in Afghanistan. These top generals gave President Biden exactly the advice the president told the American people he had not received. To be very clear, Mr. President, the Commander-in-Chief gets to make the final decision, no matter what the advisors suggest. But he needs to own his decision. The President publicly misstated what advice he got from his top generals is corrosive to the civilian, to the civil-military dynamic that keeps America safe. The military did their job. They gave their best military advice. It was rejected. So they saluted and executed the order of the Commander-in-Chief. That's the way it's supposed to work. But having rejected their advice, the President doesn't get to claim he never received it. Nor does he get to claim, as he has since tried to pretend, that the only alternative to his botched retreat was sending 10,000 soldiers back to Afghanistan. That's a false choice. We've heard directly from the two senior military officers in the chain of command, as well as the president's principal military advisor, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Everyone, everyone with an ounce of common sense knows President Biden's botched retreat was not the extraordinary success the president claimed. <clears throat> That's General Milley acknowledged. It is more accurate to describe the withdrawal as a strategic failure. We've now heard confirmation from our top military officers that the terrorist threat in Afghanistan is already growing. And relying on over-the-horizon counterterrorism leaves us with much less ability to do anything at all about it. What a debacle. We face a greater terrorist threat from Afghanistan than we did before we withdrew. We have less intelligence about that growing threat, and we have fewer tools with which to combat it. This administration gave our enemies in Afghanistan everything they wanted and got less than nothing in return. So, Mr. President, I know some of my colleagues want to unilaterally declare an end to the war on terrorism. Uh, if only it were that easy. But the terrorists aren't through with us. I hope my Democratic colleagues will think twice before they compound the failures in Afghanistan by trying to narrow or repeal the 2001 authorization for the use of military force. <coughs> I, for one, will strenuously oppose any further efforts by the Democratic administration or this Democratic Congress to take away any more tools or authorities that our military service members and intelligence professionals need to keep our country safe from our enemies. At some point, we'll have a different administration that will better understand how to protect America for the long term. At this rate, they will need all the tools they can possibly get. <laughs>